Hi all, welcome to this demo of deploying object scale. My name is Anuraj. I am an engineering technologist with Dell. Dell object scale is an enterprise object storage designed to run on Kubernetes. Now Dell has released the new version of object scale 1.2. In the object scale 1.2, now Dell features a Dell managed Kubernetes. So now we have two different ways of deploying the object scale. Uh, one is deploying the object scale as an application onto an existing Kubernetes cluster like OpenShift uh, cluster or we can deploy the object scale with the Dell managed Kubernetes. In this demo, we are going to deploy the object scale using the Dell managed Kubernetes. So in this, the object scale and the Kubernetes will be installed as one stack onto SUSE Enterprise Linux machines. So customer has to provide a SUSE Enterprise Linux machines and the Kubernetes and the object scale will be installed as one stack and Dell provides a single command line tool to do this deployment. Also with this new release, now object scale support very large objects of up to 30 terabyte. And these large objects now support different use cases like large HPC, analytics and AI projects. And the object scale is also available in a community edition, which is free to use for non-production use cases. So anybody would like to uh, test out object scale, you can download the object scale from the Dell website and use it free for non-production use cases. So for deploying the object scale, I had prepared a five SUSE Enterprise Linux machines. So let's look into these machines. And these machines have five local drives of one terabyte size, which will be used by the object scale for creating the object stores. I already downloaded the object scale installation software bundle and kept in my management machine. And let's untar this object scale software bundle. Inside the software bundle, we can see the DKCLI tool, which is the command line tool used to deploy the object scale and the Dell managed Kubernetes cluster onto the slash machines. Next, we should use the DKCLI command to create the authentication file. The auth file contains the username and password for the slash machines. The installation bundle also contains a sample configuration file template, which we can edit for installation or there is an option to generate the configuration file template using the DKCLI command. So for this demo, I already created a configuration file. So let's look into this configuration file. In the configuration file, we should provide the path of the object scale installer and the installation files, which was part of the software bundle. And next we should provide the load balancer IP address pool, which will be assigned to the uh, load balancer services of the object scale then if you see you have to provide the authentication file which we created using the dkcli command then we should provide the pod ip subnet and the service ip subnet then we should provide all the list of the nodes and the ip address of the nodes so in the last we should update the storage class to be used by the object scale portal and this depends on the disk configuration of your nodes in my node i have enough space in the local disk so i'm going to give the syslvg storage class to be used by the object scale portal next we can validate this configuration file using the dkcli check config command next use the dkcli command to get the end user license agreement revision date and this will be used during the installation now we can proceed with the installation of the object scale using the dkcli install product command and this installation will take some time depending on the number of nodes we have so i'll post this video and we'll come back once the installation is completed now our installation is successfully completed and we can validate the logs by getting into the installer container which is running on the management machine now let's ssh into one of the object scale node and use the kubectl command to validate the installation so we can see our nodes are ready state and let's verify all the applications are installed and we can see here our object scale applications are successfully installed. Also make sure the object scale has detected all the local drives on the nodes. Get the object scale portal IP address from the load balancer service, object scale portal external. I already created a DNS entry for this IP address. So let's open that in a browser. And the default credential will be root and change me. And during the initial login itself, the object scale will ask us to change the credential. So I'll change the default credential to my custom one. 
So this is the console of object scale and it's organized into three different section. So there's a manage S3 where all the uh, S3 related configurations are done. Then there is monitoring tab. Then there is an administration tab where uh, we do all the uh, object scale administration. So let's add a license into it. So as we discussed, I'm adding a community edition free license. Once the license is installed, we can create the object store. So go to the object scale, click on the new object store, Provide a name for the object store. Select the version. By clicking the advanced option, we get to customize the object store installation. So now complete the object scale creation. And the object scale creation will take some time. So I'll post the video here and I'll come back once the installation is completed. Now the object scale installation is successfully completed we can see the state as started and we can get the S3 endpoint IP address from the S3 service details and I already created a DNS entry for this IP address. So in the dashboard, we can see the capacity details of the object store. So in the account, currently we don't have any accounts created and attached to this object store. So let's go to the accounts and create a new account and give a name for it and we can enable encryption if required at the account level. For this demo, I'm not doing that. So once the account is created, we can go to the users and create a new S3 user here and assign permission to this user. Go to policy. So here we can see system manage policy. So by default, we'll get a S3 full access policy. So I'll assign this S3 full access policy to this user. Now create the user. And during this creation, we'll get the secret key for this user. So please download and keep this safe. And this is the only time you're going to get this key. Now the account is created. Go to the object store, accounts, and attach this account to the object store. So here we can configure the default quota or encryption at the object store level. So we'll keep this as it is for this demo. Now we can create the S3 bucket in the object store. So go to the buckets, select the namespace where the object store is deployed. So in my case, it is default namespace and create a new bucket, provide the name. And here we can attach a bucket policy if required, then create the bucket. Now the bucket is created. Let's open the S3 browser and connect to this bucket. So let's configure the account here. So provide the endpoint and the access key and the secret key. So the account is added and we can see the bucket here. So let's try to upload some sample data into this bucket. So we successfully uploaded the files into this S3 bucket. Now the object scale supports the configuration of authentication providers like LDAP or Active Directory for configuring the management users. So let's configure Active Directory into this object scale. So go to the authentication provider, new authentication provider, select AD, configure the Active Directory parameters here, select like domain name, the base distinguished name, the server IP address, the bind username and password. Also configure the user and the group parameters and save the configuration. So now we successfully configured the Active Directory authentication providers. Now we can go to the role mapping and create a role mapping for a group inside the Active Directory. So I select the group. This group already exists in my Active Directory and you can see there are lots of pre-existing roles available. So I'll try select the admin role here. So I'll log out and I'll log in to this as an Active Directory user. So this user is part of the Active Directory and also member of the group where we assign the admin permission. So select the authentication provider and log in. Now you can see the Active Directory user is able to successfully log into this object scale. And this user has full admin permission in this object scale system. The new object scale introduced some security settings like the configurable password rules and the account lockout settings to increase the security posture of the object scale system. So this concludes this demo. Thank you for watching.